Chris Mahoney is running out of time. Chris alleges he was sacked after telling his employer he was dying. Instead of accepting what happened, Chris is now taking on the multinational fast food giant. He spoke with Ben Fordham about the final fight of his life. All I know is if I don't survive, at least I'll have tried. I'm not going to give up until, you know, either I die or we win. If they are willing to treat a dying bloke the way they have, what else are they willing to do? I couldn't be prouder of him. I couldn't. Chris Mahoney is 33 years old, but he may not live to see his next birthday. And you've got a limited amount of time based on doctor's advice. Unfortunately. Chris's battle isn't only with the disease that's killing him. You don't strike me as the kind of guy who would start a lot of fights. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, look, I'm not going to back down from one, but uh, I definitely go don't go seeking it. You're in one now, though. Unfortunately, that's the case. How committed are you to proving the point that you're out to prove? Well, I'll take it to the grave. <laughs> Unfortunately, probably literally. Chris's world was turned on its head in October last year. I threw up and there was just a speck of blood um, and I thought to myself, I've seen this Hallmark movie, I know how it ends. And unfortunately, I went to the hospital and uh, it happened. What did they tell you? At about 5 a.m., uh, one of the doctors in the ER came in and told me, I'm terribly sorry to say that you've got uh, a bowel cancer and there's two large blockages there. And had the surgery, got it removed, it was all good. Then they let me know it had spread to the liver and the lungs um, and it wasn't operational. How much time were you given? Uh, nine to 18 months. Dealing with that diagnosis, Chris moved back in with his parents, unaware there was another surprise coming. You then have a discussion with your workplace about it. That's correct. At first, their reaction? At first, they were devastated and 100% fully supportive so I told them you know I'm dying and I said to them so I might as well resign because you know not going to be able to do much and so on and they 100% dissuaded me from that and convinced me not to resign outright rejected my resignation and uh, work suggested that uh, instead of resigning I uh, convert from permanent full-time to a casual employment and then work as I'm able to do so. So that would allow you to focus on the, the fight of your life yep. while also doing the job that you've done so well for so long? That's it. It sounds like a good plan. I thought it was. Why didn't that plan work out? Uh, to this day, I, I don't know. Chris worked for Craveable Brands, a multinational company that owns Red Rooster and Oporto. It's got offices in Sydney, the Philippines and Singapore. In January, Chris alleges he got a call from his boss, who he says demanded his resignation. Chris eventually did resign on the back of what he claims was an offer of casual employment. What led you to the understanding that the company was going to offer you casual employment? Well, the former chief people officer actually sent a text to me and as far as I understood, that arrangement was written in stone. But after Chris resigned, he claims he was cut off. No one returned your calls? No. No one replied to your texts? I texted, I called, no one answered and they were my support network for my terminal diagnosis. It was an entire part of my life that was just ripped away from me in the most cruel, um, 
fashion imaginable and all I can assume is as soon as I was no longer valuable to them, they tossed me aside. You're dying. As far as they're concerned, I'm already dead. Well, it won't be me. The irony is that Chris has a law degree and has worked as an employment lawyer. He's taking on the very company he used to defend as Cravable's employment relations consultant. He's taking them to the Fair Work Commission and is prepared to go to the federal court. What's the basis of your claim? I am saying they have dismissed me because of my terminal illness. That's the legal version yep. of the argument. What's the human version of the argument? They lied to me, they cheated from me, they cheated me, and uh, you know, realistically they stole from me. Um, and they did it at a time when I was absolutely the most vulnerable I've ever been in my life and at a time when they knew that I believed wholeheartedly in them. And nobody believes in Chris more than mum and dad. Vincent and Colleen are backing his big fight. He'll follow this through to the bitter end. Colleen, you must be proud of the fact that he's standing up for what is right. He's always right. stood up for what he believed in. He's always stood up for other people. He is an extremely ethical person and we are so proud of what he's doing. It's very difficult, but we, we love him with all our hearts. Well, you know what, having met your son, I wouldn't be betting against him. Well, we often lose when we do. <laughs> The law's got significant protections for people uh, who have um, terminal illnesses or indeed any disability. So the law says that if you do have a disability, then you can't be treated less favourably because of that disability. Will Snow is a partner at Finlayson's Lawyers. You can absolutely be forced to resign. And that's when courts look at a situation and they say, well, has the employer engaged in conduct that has forced someone to resign, and that is they had no other choice. In a statement to A Current Affair, Cravable Brands says... We reject any suggestion that Chris was dismissed or coerced into resigning, and we dispute the other claims submitted to the FWC. We know this is a tough time for Chris and his family. That is why in recent months we have made a number of offers of settlement to resolve this dispute. If this makes it here to the federal court, you're taking on a multinational. That's the plan. This is a big battle. Yeah, it is, and I don't pretend otherwise. This is a business that, during the pandemic, made more than a billion dollars in sales revenue for a fiscal year. You know, there have been times when I've thought, you know, I can just end this, I can just accept the breadcrumbs that Cravable have thrown at me and I can move on with what's left of my life, but... Uh, at the end of the day, it's not about me. It is really about sending a message that Australian employers should not ever treat an employee the way I have been treated. You know, the, only thing worse than the hardest part of this story is that Chris Mahoney doesn't know how long he's got left. He's in a race against time to prove his point. In employment law, the claim does not survive the death of the applicant. You've got to stay alive long enough to win this case. Yep, and uh, if I don't, I'll uh, go down swinging. Chris offered to settle the case today if the company donated to the Cancer Council. Cravable Brands has not accepted. The full statement from the company is on our homepage.